When you become a Christian, you will not get from the moment of your conversion to the pearly gates without messing up. Everybody's going to mess up somewhere. I wish I could tell you that wasn't true. Someone once told me that the best definition of Christianity was falling down and getting up, falling down and getting up, falling down and getting up all the way to heaven. <laughs> we all going to fail. Is that true? Yes, it is. Hey, Smart Christians, welcome back. This message is really for those of us who are believers, who understand the truth of being an actual Christian, not for the people who don't think that they're in a position to where they mess up or where they have faults. There are some who even think that they do not sin. Obviously, they're sinning by even making up that lie. The Bible says that you are a lie when you say that. So this net message isn't necessarily for them, but for those of us who understand that we struggle. The Bible is full of believers who mess up from the beginning of the pages to the end. I mean, it starts off with what? A big mess up. Now, they weren't necessarily believers, not that we know of, but the people that we know that we count as believers that have faith, Abraham, Moses, Elijah, Jonah, David. These are people who believe the Lord and what? Messed up and in many cases messed up royally. But then we go to the New Testament. We see New Testament believers, people who have the Holy Spirit literally inside of them, also messing up. How about Paul? How about Peter? We all do. But the difference is, and there should be a difference between when we mess up and the world. We all are going to mess up. As a matter of fact, uh, there's oftentimes you won't be able to tell the difference between us when we mess up and when the world mess up. Because again, we all mess up. But is there a difference? Well, obviously there's a difference. We mess up, though we don't have a lifestyle of messing up. We don't have a lifestyle of sin. We don't make that our life. When we do mess up, it bothers us, which is what the Bible refers to as a repentant heart. It grieves us because it also grieves literally the spirit in us. So when we mess up, it should bother you. When you tell a lie, it bothers you. When you lust at someone, after someone, it bothers you when you're jealous or envious of someone. It should bother you when you're angry with someone. It should bother you. And guess what? There are times where you have these thoughts and then you even act on those thoughts, right? Well, after coming to your senses, it should bother you. And again, we all mess up. We all fall. The difference between the difference between us and the world when they fall and when we fall, when we fall, we, we extend our hand to the only person who can deliver, who can save us, who can pick us up. And hopefully these are instances where we commit ourselves to learning more of him, growing closer to him. And so that very same mess up, that very same thing that kind of hindered us, we don't do it again. Are we going to live this world uh, perfectly without messing up? No, 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 not going to happen. We're going to mess up from now until the time that we've got skin. Let me read what John says in 1 John. This is the message that we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So his blood is cleansing us. Even if we walk, though we walk in the light, his blood has cleansed us not from only sins past, but also these current sins that we may still struggle with. Let's keep reading. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So in other words, even in spite of walking, uh, we are still going to sin. If we say we don't have sin, if we say we do not sin, uh, we are alive. Now, do we live a lifestyle of a pattern of sin? No, we don't. But we are still going to have those issues. That's just how it's going to be. But here's the greater issue. And this is what happens. People will tell you, the devil will tell you that you are no longer a believer. You are no longer Christian when you mess up. And what happens when you fail is this. Two things the devil will do. First of all, he will tell you there's no way you could ever do whatever. And then you'll do it. And then he'll come in behind you and say, there's no way you could ever be forgiven for what you did. 
He's wrong on both accounts. Satan is going to try to tell you or through other people that what you've done was too much, as though what God, as though God had no clue that you being a believer would mess up so bad that he didn't shed enough blood to cover that sin, that he didn't offer enough forgiveness, that his payment, that his payment wasn't enough to pay for the debt that you incurred. If you are a true Christian, even after the sin, you are still a true Christian. He didn't say, and I give unto them eternal life, and if they don't mess up, they can come to heaven. That's not what it says. Eternal life, listen to me, starts the moment you believe, not when you die. The moment you accept Jesus Christ, eternal life begins, and eternal life cannot be interrupted. Going back to 1 John again, look at what he says in chapter 5. Verse 11, he says, and this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this is life in his son. Verse 12, whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. So he says, if you've got the son, what do you have? Present tense, you currently have life. And 13 also solidifies it. He says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Eternal life is not something that you get at 8 a.m. and then 9.30 a.m. or the next day you no longer have it. That would not be eternal life. That would be temporary life. That would be one hour life. That would be one day life. That would be one year life. So if you have it, if you currently have it, you have eternal life when? Right now. For how long? Forever through eternity. That's the truth of it. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Don't let the devil tell you otherwise. Though we do sin, we have an advocate and he is always currently and in future will intercede, will advocate, will mediate for us, even though as Christians, we will mess up. He understands that. We ought to understand that. We don't live that lifestyle. It bothers us. It pains us. It grieves us. But by that same token, he has paid the debt. And since he has paid the debt, the Bible says, because of that, we have eternal life. Amen.